Hello, I'm Yoko, and it's July 10th, which is my OC Daiki Akagawa's birthday, so it's time for another OC Spotlight video. If you haven't seen Yoshio's Spotlight video, I suggest that you check it out before watching this, as I go more into detail about the setup and the comic where these OCs are from. If you just heard something in the background, that was my cat jumping on my bed and tearing it up. Thank you, Kit Kat. I especially advise checking out that other video if you are unfamiliar with the Danganronpa series as these are OCs based on those games. I'll link my OC Spotlight playlist below and in a card above as Yoshio's is the first in that playlist. But if you decide not to, then a quick disclaimer will be that the Danganronpa series is meant for a typically older audience and contains more adult themes not limited to murder. But with that said, let's get into talking about Daiki. And art-wise, I'm going to be doing the same thing I did with the previous OC Spotlight video. So enjoy these miscellaneous doodles that are in the background. Daiki is the ultimate archer, and while he hasn't shown off that much in the comic, as of now, I can say that it will come into play a bit later. He is a soft-spoken and kind character. He doesn't really talk much and only really speaks up when it's to help someone else or when he's spoken to first. He's very polite, even in situations where he probably shouldn't be that nice, and he prefers to keep the peace and keep things calm in general, asking certain characters to be nicer and things like that. Contrasting this soft vibe, Daiki is a very tall boy, and he is 6 foot 4 inches, which has come up a few times in the comic, such as when he hit his head on a doorframe, and when he was too tall to the point where he could be seen over a stall. Just little minor things. And his height leans into reasons why I picked his name, which was a question some people had. And quick disclaimer, I don't speak Japanese, but when I was making his name through Google, I decided on Daiki because it said that it was a combination of the kanji for dai, which means big slash great, and one of the options for the different kanji for ki meant tree. This also inspired his general color palette as he mostly wears brown and has green hair like leaves. He is kind of literally my tree child. Also, real quick, other design inspirations came from Decidueye from Pokemon, which is another reason why he's an archer. And he actually has a pet Japanese Scops owl, which I don't know if I said that right, but he has a pet owl. His owl is named Dart because of Dartrix, so you know. I am a Pokemon nerd at heart, and I am shameless with my inspirations. I also made him left-handed because I first drew him shooting a bow the left-handed way by accident, but hey, now I have a fun bonus trait for him. But back to names, I believe his last name was chosen at random, though it's been a while so I'm not quite sure. But Google says that Akagawa means Red River, if you're curious about what the meaning was. Both of these names are pretty nature-related, which is fitting for Daiki, who loves the outdoors and is a bit lost with this technologically run world. There's been a few occasions in the comic where he is handed something like his e-handbook and just looks very confused. Just little minor things like that I kind of love drawing in the background. He has no idea how to use most of the stuff, and while not pointed out in the comic, I will say that he doesn't actually know how to use his e-handbook. And he has just memorized the rules when they were read out loud once, and he is hoping that he doesn't actually need to learn how to use it. Another case of his tech panic was when Monokuma handed him the Monokuma file for the first case, and he had a very concerned face and was just very confused about how to use it. Luckily, another character, Fumiko, noticed his struggling and jumped in to save him. I actually have Monokuma giving him technology first in the group to mess with him. Little tiny bonus things. But Daiki's sheltered in general and tends to laugh things off when he falls for things that he probably shouldn't such as the snakes in a peanuts can prank that some people teased him for falling for, considering it was pretty obvious coming from someone called the literal ultimate prankster. Honestly, Daiki is an absolute sweetheart, which is shown well with a small spoiler for Chapter 2, where he makes a makeshift, very simple memorial area for the students that had died so far. Making little doodles of them despite not being confident in art, He's really caring for others, and despite not usually being one to stand out, he's had a lot of good little moments. I try to give him little things to stand out with. And another thing that readers of the comic know about Daiki is the fact that he is majorly shipped with a character named Fumiko, who I mentioned earlier. They've had a few cute moments together, one of which reveals that Daiki knows a little bit of French, which he learned from his aunt that lives in France now. And I've also made ship art that was voted for, that you might have seen in the reference images on the side of the video. 
I will not say whether or not the ship will be canon in the story, but I will say that Daiki thinks freckles are cute, and I'll leave it at that. That being said, there is another character that is constantly flirting with Daiki, but he's not the only one that she flirts with, and we'll get to her video eventually. Side note, Daiki is one of the few straight people in the cast, so for anyone wondering sexuality-wise, he's straight, but he is an ally. Now I'm going to get into some, some questions that you guys left on a community post for or about Daiki. If I answered them already in the video, I won't be bringing them up here, but with that said, I actually answered most of them, I think, already when I went into his name and design. But let's start with what hobbies he has outside of his talent. Daiki likes to read whatever books he gets his hands on, and due to him not knowing a lot of technology, he has no idea if any of the books he's read are movies or anything like that. And I feel like he'd prefer the book form anyway. Other than this, another hobby he has is bird watching, and he can and will sit quietly for hours just watching and listening to them when he doesn't have anything to do. And another question was, what is a treasured memory he has slash something that always makes him happy? I'm not going into detail because free time event stuff and we haven't gotten there yet with Daiki. But Daiki is a very simple guy and his happiest memories are with his family and just enjoying life. He also enjoys the story of how he ended up with his pet owl. His family found it injured when it was young and they meant to rehabilitate him and just release him. But Dart stuck around so now he has a super cool pet owl. A second half of that question was, if he could be any creature, extinct, imaginary, or existing, what would he be? And that is kind of a tough question. The simple answer would be a bird or a bird-like mythical creature, but I can also see him kind of as an elf. I think it's the forest vibe and the long hair. Just in general, he has very elf vibes. But yeah, there was more questions, but I'm pretty sure I went into them already, at least ones that I could answer. There was a question on if I had a potential punishment time plan for him in the comics, since this is Danganronpa, but I'm keeping my lips sealed on any potential spoilers. And I'm thinking of, for future characters, just having a section at the end where I just talk about the spoilers so far in the comic, but we'll see. But yeah, that's basically Daiki. I'm keeping this relatively short, as I'm very busy with stuff in general right now. I'm doing so many art fight revenges. You guys are insane. I appreciate all the art you have drawn for me, but also, I have so much to do. <laughs> and if you like Daiki as a character and want to add on to my pile of future revenges, I am drowning in right now. Um, he is a character up on my art fight, which is linked below with my other so socials, including the Despair Emporium Instagram, which is where the comic he's in is. If you enjoyed the video and haven't already, I'd appreciate if you could like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Videos might be a little sporadic this month, but I have some shorter videos planned as I work on Galaxy Clam for hopefully the end of the month during these busy times. With that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.